Once again, I want you to just remember that this night is for you in particular. And that you came here to get something. You'll go back home with something. Just open your mouth and tell the Lord what the need is. And you tell the Lord, you are not going to go back empty-handed. You came here for something, and that something must be given to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you because we know you will not fail. I pray, Lord, touch everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you build up everyone. Raise up everyone. And whosoever is weak in the mind or weak in faith or weak in any way, strengthen them in Jesus' name. Your people will not go back empty-handed. Confirm your miracle upon everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Matthew chapter 11. Verses 4, 5, and 6. Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which do ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. The background to this story is that John the Baptist had been arrested by Herod. He was put in the prison. But then John had been talking about Jesus. He's the one coming. He's the very Son of God. He's the Lamb of God. He is the representative of the Almighty God here on earth. He has come to reverse the fall of Adam. And everything we lost in Adam, he has come to restore unto us. All of a sudden, the same John was arrested. And so he wanted to know everything I said about Jesus, all the revelation I gave about Jesus, is it true? Are you the one to come or should we wait for another? Maybe in your mind you are thinking, is Jesus going to be the one you are waiting for or should you wait for another? Will he heal you or will it be another that will heal you? Will he deliver you or will it be another person that will deliver you? Will he bless you? Will he save you? And will he supply all the needs of your life or do we wait for another? And the Lord Jesus then sent back to him, go tell him that this is what is happening. And because of all this is happening, we know that Jesus is the one we are waiting for. Tonight, Jesus is the one you are waiting for. He saves, he heals, he delivers, he restores, he removes mountains, he solves problems, he destroys the works of the devil. He is the one you are waiting for. There is no other one in your life that is going to bless you. Jesus will bless you tonight in Jesus' name. The blind receive their sight. It will happen to you. The lame walk. It will happen to you. The lepers are cleansed. It will happen to you. And the deaf, they hear. Have you listened to some of the testimonies we have heard? The ones who are hearing here at the headquarters and the ones who are hearing in every region, in every state, in Nigeria, in every nation, in Africa and beyond. As we are having testimonies, we are giving testimonies here. They too, they are giving testimonies. Great things God is doing. 
it convinces us that Jesus will solve your problem. You don't have to wait for another time or another personality. Jesus is the answer to your problem. But now, look at verse 12. In verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. You will take your miracle tonight. The force of faith, the fervency of prayer, will give you everything you need from the Lord tonight. It will grant you in Jesus' name. We're talking about the old time power of our unlimited God. The old time power of our unlimited God. You want to settle it in your mind that this God we're talking about that created the whole of the earth created the whole of the universe he is unlimited look at the vastness of the earth and look at the distance of the sun to the earth the distance of the moon to the earth and look at all the other planets over there and look at all the research men have made and they have told us how large the universe is and how many other planets we have in our galaxy and it is this God that has done it. He is the unlimited God. Tonight, this God will prove himself to be unlimited in your life in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? What's happening in your life? What problem do you have? What concern do you have? What is your ambition? What's your aspiration? What's the body you are brought here tonight? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee. At the time appointed, I will, I will return unto thee. God has an appointed time for you. Can you think of how significant you are, how important you are, that God says, I have an appointed time for you. It will solve your problem. Look at Jeremiah chapter 32, the unlimited God. Jeremiah chapter 32. As we look at chapter 32 of Jeremiah, we're reading here from verse... 27, Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord. Not I was, not I will be. He is the Lord. The same God we're talking about. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What challenge do you have? What problem do you have? What are you thinking of? He'll provide. He will supply. All those lacks in the life, all those uh, situations in your life, tonight is the night of turning around. Amen. It will turn around everything in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible. You see, there are people, once uh, they've gone to check up, and then they tell them that this and this and that, that this looks impossible, except you go overseas, except you do this, then they feel that love's hope. Look at our brother who testified tonight here. It's like nothing could be done in Nigeria, nothing could be done in Africa. He has to go to India or go to Israel. But he came over here and the God of the supernatural, the God of miracles, the God of signs and wonders, he has solved all the problems. That's how God will solve your problem. As all these people, testimony are rejoicing, you will rejoice. Your tears, it will dry up. Your sorrow, he will take away. St
stay with the Lord. He has an appointed miracle at the appointed time for the appointed person. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Was well, there not in your life that looks you cannot untie? With God, all things are possible. What's the situation in your life that looks overwhelming, that is almost drowning you? With God, all things are possible. Even when you cannot pray anymore, when you cannot cry anymore, when you cannot even read the Bible anymore, when you say, I've come to the limit, the Lord Jesus will take you up. The old time power of our unlimited God. Three points very quickly before we pray. There's still prayer tonight. I said there's still prayer tonight because the power of God is still going to work marvelously in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the supremacy of the unlimited God. The supremacy, the sovereignty, the greatness the most high place that he occupies the supremacy of the unlimited God. Number two, the short-sightedness of limiting God. Anytime we limit God, we're short-sighted. We're measuring God with our own little strength. We're measuring the power of God with the scientific knowledge of man. We're looking at God as if God were a human being like us and it's short-sightedness i pray that god will brighten your sight it will give you revelation when you see the revelation of god your god will be big your problems will be small number three the supernatural signs from the unlimited god supernatural signs from the unlimited god number one let's look at number one the supremacy of the unlimited God. And when we're going to Luke chapter 1, supremacy of the unlimited God, we're looking at uh, chapter 1 of Luke. And reading from verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. The power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you tonight. In the case of Mary, it was to be a fulfillment of the prophecy given 700 years before that a virgin shall conceive. But logically, it was impossible, but it happened. Historically, it never happened before, but it happened something is going to happen in your life it may look biologically impossible scientifically impossible historically impossible impossible nationally impossible but it is going to happen in your life in jesus name the power of the holy ghost will overshadow you look at it now in verse um, in verse uh, 37 for with god nothing shall be impossible with god nothing shall be impossible and mary said behold the handmaid of the lord be it unto me according to thy word that's all you need that's all you need to say anytime you see a great promise of god a mighty promise of god as if this may not how will this happen how will that happen and then you are told it's the power of the holy ghost that will do it in your life then all you say is behold a child of god be it unto me according to thy word it will happen to you look at job chapter 42 job was sick job had lost a lot lost children lost property lost his talk the herds lost everything virtually literally and he lost his health the man might even have preferred to die but he came to the realization as you are coming tonight that our god is unlimited your god tonight is unlimited 
and he's for you he's your father he's your creator he's your redeemer and he's the one that has prepared everything for you from this day onward you will find impossibilities becoming possible you will find great things happening from this day onward the moment you realize this our god this my god is unlimited look at 42 of job chapter 42 of job verse 2 i know that thou canst do everything when you come to the realization i know my god he can do everything are you barren he can give you children have you lost job he can give you jobs have you lost your peace is the prince of peace he'll give you peace uh, is your problem overwhelming you as if you cannot take another step again it will raise you up from that valley of despondency new life will come to you again i said new life will come to you again i know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee the moment you confess that you know all the chapters from chapter one of job to chapter two to chapter three he was complaining he was talking to his friend i know i'm all right i don't know why this has happened i wonder the day i was born and then the friends will say you must have committed secret sin if there's no sin in your life why would all this calamity be on you then he will reply them again i don't understand i look for him here i look for him there i couldn't find him but and the problem remained there days of complaint complaint does not remove problem murmuring does not uh, remove problem sorrow does not remove problem crying does not remove problem argument does not remove problem but the day he said i know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from you the moment he said that look at verse 10 and the lord turned the captivity of job and the lord turned the captivity of, the day you realize that this our god is unlimited and you voice it out lord i thank you you are my god god i know that you are my creator i know you sent jesus christ to save me you send Jesus Christ to give me life and life in abundance. The moment you confess that with your mouth, things will turn around in your life. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Multiple miracles are coming upon your life. In first Kings, first Kings, chapter 5 first kings chapter 5 this was the first time Naaman was coming to the man of God maybe this is the first time you are coming here you've never been here before this is your first time you are going to take your miracle back home look at this in first Kings chapter 5 verse 1 and it says in first second kings rather second kings chapter five second kings chapter five we're looking at it from verse one it says now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the lord had given deliverance unto unto syria he was also a mighty man in valor but he was a leper. He was a leper. Great man, but a leper. Great warrior, but a leper. A great professional, but a leper. He had a great position, but a leper. Great privilege, but a leper. Rich man, but a leper. And then in verse 3, And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, what well, with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. He didn't know about any program, about any prophet, about Elisha. He didn't know. But this maid that they are taking from Israel, the land of Israel, said, If my master will, be, will go to the prophet in Samaria, just like all these testimonies were hearing, my sister told me to come. My uncle told me to come. 
a medical doctor told me have you had something is happening there go and then they come as somebody told Naaman, somebody has told you and you are here you will not be disappointed in jesus name and then in verse 8 and it came and it was so when elisha the man of god had heard that the king of israel had rent his clothes that he said to the king saying wherefore as thou rent thy clothes let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel let them come they will know there is a god in the land the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Father, my Father, our Heavenly Father, He will roll all their problems away in Jesus' name. And then the Lord, the Lord told Elisha what to tell him. Go jump in Jordan seven times. Leprosy will go away. Your flesh will come back. All that incurable disease, everything will go. Can I tell you something? leprosy at that time was incurable it was a disease that nobody ever got any healing from it is like hiv AIDS today and also it carried a terrible stigma on the people and today our god who is unlimited it will take hiv AIDS away from you in jesus name and then eventually they pleaded with him when he wasn't going to, going to do what the prophet had said. And then verse 14, and then went he down and did himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and it was clean. It will happen to you. I said it will happen to you. All the rubbish that the devil has put in your life until this day, the Lord will clear everything away. All that the enemies, enemies of progress, enemies of righteousness, everything they have heaped upon you, the Lord will clear everything away in Jesus' name. The heavy load on your head, every load on your neck, every load on your mind, every load in your family that you're saying, How oh, will this problem be solved? Thank God tonight the problem is solved in Jesus' name. In John chapter 5, John chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 5. John chapter 5, verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years can you imagine somebody carrying problem for 38 years 38 years just problem 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 a person that was born at the time that problem started that fellow is married now that fellow is already having children now and the man is still in that same problem do you know that the long-standing problems mountains were brought here tonight the lord is going to take everything away 38 years it will solve the problem 40 years it will solve the problem 50 years it will solve the problem rest your mind we come to this god who is unlimited the supremacy of the unlimited god the sovereignty of the unlimited god the greatness the might the strength the extraordinary power of the unlimited God. Look at verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie, lying down and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. Maybe that's what you are saying. I have no man. But thank God you have Jesus. I said you have Jesus. I have no helper, you have Jesus. You are a widow, I have no husband, you have Jesus. You are a widower, I have no wife, but you have Jesus. You are barren, I have no child, but you have Jesus. And you don't have anybody that will help you. You feel lonely, you feel alone, as if the whole problems of the world, they just heap it upon you and there's nobody to even share it with. Thank God, Jesus, the friend of sinners. Jesus, the healer of the sick jesus the liberator of those who are bound jesus is for you tonight it will solve the problem in jesus name 
he says and when he saw him lie there he said will you be made with he said i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while i am coming another stepped down before me and jesus saith unto him rise take up thy bed and walk rise take up thy bed and walk it has happened again i said it has happened again 38 years of problem in one sentence everything vanished away tonight is your night i said tonight is your night long-standing problem of many years everything gone and immediately 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 the man was made whole and he took up his bed and he walked and the on the same day was the sabbath day well that shows us a beach we cannot read all the references because the whole bible is full of the majesty of god of the greatness of God, of the power of God. Let's go to point number two. The short-sightedness of limiting God. Anybody that limits God and say, can God do this? Can God do that? Can God do That's limiting God. I have HIV AIDS. Can God heal me? That's limiting God. What's HIV AIDS? In the presence of the Almighty God. I have tuberculosis can God heal me that's limiting God what's tuberculosis in the sight of the unlimited God I have a you know a child that has a problem of epilepsy can God heal my child that's limiting God can God do it can God? of course he can do it and tonight he will do it I thought you are still awake that amen will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name Look at Psalm 78. Psalm 78. I'm reading here from verse 19. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. And let us see that God is a God of power, a God of miracle. And anybody that says, can God do, can God do this? That's limiting God. Psalm 78, verse 19. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? There's no farm, there are no grocery stores, there's no place to buy this from, buy this from. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Well, you know the answer. God surprised them. God will surprise you. For 40 years, 40 years, every day of the 40 years, he gave them manna coming from heaven every day. And they said, can God, you cannot limit God. He can and he will look at verse 20 behold he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and streams overflowed can he give bread also can he provide flesh for his people we're talking about two million to two and a half million to three million people how are we going to get water to drink this is a desert place and this is a wilderness look at all these multitudes of people if we dig a well we're not sure we're going to get water and as we travel in the desert the place is so dry can god give us water he said moses take the rod in your hand go to that dry rock there and strike it and water came out it will satisfy you i said it will satisfy you we cannot limit God. That's the point I'm making. Anybody trying to limit God, can he open the eyes of the blind? Can he make the lame to walk? Can he make the short legs grow? Can he give jobs to the jobless? Can he provide this? Can he provide? That's limiting God. He will. He will. He will in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 41. In verse 41, yea, they turned back and tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not His hand. Anytime anybody is limiting God, it doesn't remember, it doesn't remember what God had done. See what God has done since God brought us the spirit of revival. Every time we come, every time we come, He's giving us testimonies here. 
And then in all the various states, testimonies are going on. All the regions, testimonies are going on. All the, all the nations, testimonies are going on. He has done it for others. Your turn has come. I said your turn has come. Nobody now can say, well, he did that, but he cannot do my own. You have had problems that are more serious than your own. Problems that are as serious as your own. Problems that people are thinking will take it overseas. Maybe they'll solve the problem there. He did it for them here. This is the place of your miracle. This place, God established this place because of you. God brought this revival time because of you. Anytime you're weak, anytime you're sick, anytime you have a problem, remember the unlimited God is here for you. Every problem will be rolled away in Jesus' name. You will not die prematurely. You will not die before your time. Everything the Lord has appointed, you will do here before you go for your reward. You will do and accomplish in Jesus' name. Look at verse 42. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Because they didn't remember what they ought to remember. That's why they limited God. I will not limit God. I said I will not limit God. Your miracle is on the way. Second Kings chapter 7. The short-sightedness of limiting God. The short-sightedness. Can he heal me? Can he do it tonight? Can he bless me now? Can he take all this sorrow away? All this bad luck, all this curse, all this yoke, all this torment of the enemy, all this shame, all this stigma upon my life. Can he brighten my life? Can he make me to go in the path where I will feel satisfied, feel fulfilled, feel honorable? Am I going to carry this kind of shame and reproach for the rest of my life? No, you will not carry a reproach anymore. I said you will not carry a reproach anymore. We must not limit God. God will do what he has said he will do. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. It will be unto you according to your faith. Second Kings chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven might this thing be that's limiting god they had been in farming for many years seven years and it appeared how will this ever end and they came to a very serious situation they were eating what they shouldn't be eating they lost all compassion of their neighbors they lost compassion even for their children because they Hunger drove them to the very extreme. And then the king came unto, unto the man of God. And the man of God said, By this time tomorrow, the problems of many years will be over. As you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll find the problems of many years, they are all gone. What you have cried about for seven years, for 10 years, for 15 years, you wake up tomorrow. Praise the Lord, no tears anymore, no sorrow anymore. All the heartache is gone in Jesus' name. You have somebody in the at home, because if this is not your stage, and that person, you left that person with problem. This coming week, you'll get, um, you know, telephone that that person you have been concerned about, healing has come deliverance has come and because of you miracle will come to them in jesus name 
you know, when Elisha, the man of God, said this, then this man, limiting God, he said, if the Lord will open the windows in heaven, might this sin be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Look at the punishment and look at the judgment and look at the burden that came upon him because of limiting God. You will not limit God anymore. What cannot God do? He can turn everything around in a moment of time. And all this, you have a reason for coming here. You have a reason for saying, you fasted, you waited upon the Lord. There's a reason for that. That reason why you are waiting upon the Lord, the Lord will answer your prayer. And when he says this is what he will do, there is no point still limiting God and saying, Oh God, how will that happen? Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 19. Daniel chapter 6. We're looking at verse 19. Here the king already knew that Daniel was in the lion's den. And he didn't know what God will do. He was limiting God in so much. Look at verse, look at verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions and when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice that's how you know the people that are limiting God no joy of their faith there's no strength of faith there's no great expectation he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel and the king spake and said to Daniel O Daniel servant of the living God is thy God whom thou servest continually able? Is thy God able? Is thy God able to deliver thee from the, from the lions limiting God? Well, thank God Daniel did not limit God. If your name is Daniel, be like this Daniel. Be like this Daniel. You will not limit God. And if your literal name is not Daniel, be like Daniel yourself. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to find God true and be faithful to God. And that same faith of Daniel, let it surge up in your heart. That even if you are in the midst of lions, in the den of lions in your community, those lions of an enemy will not do anything to hurt your life in Jesus' name. Tomorrow I'm talking to you on conquering the unconquerable enemies. Conquering the unconquerable enemies tomorrow. By the time you leave this place, you will walk, you will square your shoulders and look up and put your hand in the pocket and talk like a giant and talk like a conqueror and know that your life is totally secured in the Lord in Jesus' name. You will tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy you are going to overcome in Jesus' name. Don't limit God. Can God will is your God able to deliver you from the lion's den? And then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and he has and he has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And as before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. The Lord will send his angel to you. Everything you need, protection, he'll protect your life. Provision, he will supply your need. He will supply all your need according to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You will not limit God in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 the short-sightedness 
of limiting God. The short-sightedness of limiting God. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 1 verse 11. It says in verse 11, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right hand of the altar of incense. And when Ezekiah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. God is sending something good unto you. All your prayers of these many years, God is sending the answer to you. You know, the barrenness of many years, you think now there's no hope anymore. Hope has come for you in Jesus' name. But the angel of the Lord said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for as thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear his son, and thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness. Thou shalt have joy and gladness. Zechariah is not here. I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. Thou shalt have joy and gladness. Yeah. And many shall rejoice at his birth. Something is going to happen to you. Many will rejoice. Your family will rejoice. The people that knew you before and they said, ah, so and so, so and so, so and so, as if the end has come for you. You are just beginning to live now. A new strength, a new power, a new energy, a new provision coming upon your life in Jesus' name. And he shall be great. What will come out of your life will be great. In the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. But many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit of and power of Elias, that's of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Here is limited. God now and Zechariah verse 18 verse 18 Zechariah said unto the angel whereby shall I know this for I am an old man and my wife Elizabeth well stricken in years limiting God limiting God the angel said your prayer is answered why did you pray if you are not expecting God will answer why were you asking God if you are not expecting a response from the Lord? Your prayer is answered. It's not only the prayer you have prayed tonight, all the prayers you have been praying before, and you have given up, and you thought God did not hear. Of course, God heard. He reserved the miracle for tonight, He reserved the power for tonight. All the, and all the prayers you have prayed, God has bundled everything together, and the answer is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. And then uh, Zechariah said, you know, how can this be? Look at the answer now, verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel. That stand in the presence of God. And I am saying to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that this thing shall be performed. The things are still going to be performed. That, that's, that, that's the irony of it. That even though Zechariah limited God, God proved to him that he is an unlimited God. God will prove to everyone he is unlimited. What you are thinking is so big and is so great and is impossible in a very simple way. With the snapping of the finger, the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. But he became deaf, he became dumb. All the period Elizabeth was, was uh, pregnant. Elizabeth still got pregnant. John was still born. And when that child was to be named, the miracle happened again. He began to speak clearly again. And he rejoiced in the miracle of God. You will rejoice in that miracle in Jesus' name. Point number three now. Supernatural signs from the unlimited God. Supernatural signs from the unlimited God. God will give you signs and wonders. From now on, you know when you wake up in the morning, whatever your desires are, 
whatever your prayers are whatever the promises of god are in the word of god for you know this is mine every day will be a blessed day every day will be a fulfilling day every day will be a day of blessing in your life because you have removed the limit of god you have removed the limit in your mind in the power of god and then you are going to see great wonderful things in your life throughout the rest of your life in jesus name point number three now supernatural signs from the unlimited god we're looking at exodus chapter 14 exodus chapter 14 and reading from verse 13 exodus chapter 14 we're looking at verse 13 what a wonderful god we serve look at verse 13 and moses said unto the people fear not fear ye not stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he will show to you today for the egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more how long forever maybe you, you've read that verse before but you don't understand oh i understand i know what it says it says stand still and see the salvation of the lord let me tell you what you don't understand these children of israel were slaves in egypt 20 years 50 years 100 years 200 years they have been there for a long time centuries and they have been oppressed by the Egyptians. They look that the Egyptians are the most powerful. They look that the Egyptians as unconquerable. They look that the Egyptians as terrorizing masters. Eventually, God delivered them out of Egypt. And now they came to the border of the river, the Red Sea mountain on this side mountain on that side and then the Jesus were coming from behind the old master the unconquerable enemies the unconquerable oppressors oppressing them coming and they began to cry out we are done we are destroyed we're going to die is there no grave in egypt, in egypt who should have died over there look at what is happening now these people are going to finish us and look at what moses says stand still don't be afraid all those things that arise to you until this day you will not be afraid of them anymore yeah. centuries of curses the lord is going to take away tonight yeah. centuries of oppression the lord is going to take away tonight you know the generations of curses generations of yokes generations of slavery generations of captivity generations of deformity the lord is going to take everything away in jesus name you're not going to do anything christ will do everything for you stand still and see the salvation of the lord because these egyptians terrorizing enemies who have seen all these many years you will see them again no more forever the lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace look at verse 15 and the lord said unto moses wherefore christ thou unto me speak unto the children of israel that they go forward that they go forward i said you will go forward you know count your blessings and name them one by one remember all that was said at the end of last year remember all that was said at the beginning of this year and then we said no loss no lack no limitation has god failed you has god failed us now this year 2013 is coming to a close almost this is november and december will soon come in and then will soon enter january 2014. this coming year move forward in your spiritual life move forward in your courage and confidence and faith in the lord move forward in your family move forward in that business you have laid your hand upon move forward 
in serving the Lord, in joy, in prayer, excitement, serving the Lord, move forward. And then in having, uh, receiving the miracle signs and the wonders of the Lord, you'll move forward in Jesus' name. The Lord will fight your battles for you. All the fighting of the past, you know, I will conquer this, I will conquer that. You'll find that Calvary has destroyed the power of your enemy. And all the fighting will not be necessary anymore. You will move forward into the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. And then it says, But thou shalt lift up, verse 16, thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Well, already you've heard about the miracle. Moses stretched out the rod and the river parted for them. For the weakest of the children of Israel, the smallest of the children of Israel, the youngest of the children of Israel, and the oldest, the most aged of the children of Israel, the river was patient, remained open until everybody passed over. Can you think of, can you think of, can you think of two million people, three million people? Can you think of them? Just passing over like that, even if they were, let's say, 10,000 in a row moving, it will still be a long line. And then they were moving on. Some of them were weak, some of them aged, and all that. And everybody passed over one by one. When the last one passed over, then the Egyptians they came in and they came in with confidence and with you know, with real anger, and they were going to destroy the children of Israel. Well, follow them. When they got to the middle, God said, Moses, strike back the rod, and the water closed on them. You have overcome already. Every little child in this church, every young person in this church, the least in this church, you will pass over to the other side. And when you confront a Red Sea, when you confront an impassable river, that impassable river will open up before you in Jesus' name. There's a rod that is greater than the rod of Moses. It's called the rod of the stem of, of, of Jesse. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he stretches his power, when he stretches his grace, his authority over the river of your life, everything will divide in Jesus' name. That's the assurance we have. And if your enemies try to follow you, the Lord is going to surprise you and surprise them. You will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 5. Exodus chapter 17. We're looking at verse 5. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand, and go. Look at verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee, there upon the rock, in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it. And that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. See what God did again. River, the Red Sea divided, but now they needed water to drink. And there was rock. And the Lord said, that same rock that divided the Red Sea will bring water out of the dry rock. And you remember this talking about Christ? How do we know it's talking about Christ? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And see that typically it's like a prophecy in types. Talking about Christ. And this Christ is your Savior. This Christ is your Lord. This Christ is the one that said he has come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. Look at this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading here from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not have you, I would not, uh, I would not that she should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud 
and all pass through the sea and were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did each and did and did all each the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock capital R that followed them and that rock was Christ and that rock was Christ what of life will come for you through that rock bread of life will come to you through that rock healing and deliverance will come to you through that rock all the needs of your life will be supplied through that rock because that rock Christ had been smitten for you and because he was smitten for you this great thing has already happened signs and wonders from the unlimited God I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 7 Isaiah chapter 7 we're looking at verse 14 you see there are people once uh, something looks beyond what science can do something that looks beyond what human beings can do they think that's impossible don't you know the might of our God, the strength of our God, the power of our God, the supernatural nature of our God, with him all things are possible. And so we don't need to limit him. Signs and wonders from this day on will be taking place regularly in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself, shall give you a sign remember we're talking about supernatural signs from the unlimited god as you follow this god he'll give you signs signs and wonders miracles manifestation demonstration of power and strength it says in verse 14 therefore the lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Think about that. Think about that. A kind of miracle that never happened until Jesus was born. Something that scientifically was impossible, biologically impossible, historically impossible, geographically impossible, nationally impossible. And God said that things that look impossible all around. By every consideration you can give, impossibilities will be becoming possible in your life in Jesus' name. It's a sign that he said he will give. And then eventually, look at how the sign was fulfilled. I'm reading, I'm reading now in Luke to see the fulfillment of that sign. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 from verse 30. Luke chapter 1. We're looking at verse 30. In Luke chapter 1 verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. When God is about to fulfill the sign that he spoke about, he will give you favor. When he's, when he's about to fulfill the promises he has given to you, he will give you favor. And that favor will produce signs and wonders in your life. And you will say, you praise the Lord. This God is a faithful God. It's a God that cannot fail, a God that will not fail. Verse 31. And, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. You know, these are some of the things that people count impossible. But we are learning now that we cannot limit God. Whatever he has said, all those things will come to pass. And then it goes on to say... In verse 34, then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. She was a virgin. And as a sign, the Lord said, He will give a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And the angel answered, verse 35, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. 
Therefore, also that holy sin which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also con she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Your own time has come. For with God, the angel said, for with God, angels that, you know, have been with God for such a long time, the angel said, with God, all things, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Look at verse 45. Blessed is she. Verse 45. Blessed is she. Are there blessed people here tonight? Bless this how to be blessed. And this is how to remove the limit of God. Whatever God has promised, it saves, it sanctifies, it fills and baptizes, envelopes, immerses in the Holy Ghost. He delivers, he heals, he turns things around, he works miracles, and he destroys the power of the enemy. And he is able to provide for the need of everyone. There's God. And this is the condition of having that fulfilled in our lives. Look at verse 45. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance. In your life, there shall be a performance. The promises of God will receive a demonstration, a performance in your life in Jesus' name. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. A performance, a performance, a performance. From this night, your life will become a life of performance. The Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it. Now Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. We're reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Behold, I am the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. Behold, I am the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. Look at your family. Are you a father? I am the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. Are you a mother? A mother there? I am the children. Signs, wonders, and miracles will come to your children. I am the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. Are you a leader? Sectional leader in the church? Are you a leader? A pastor in the church? Are you a leader? An overseer in the church? Are you a leader? And then you have people under your leadership. I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and for wonders. Look at this whole church. You are a child of God in this church. I want you to realize this unlimited God will begin to work wonders in your life. Here is the promise as given us as a church. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and were for wonders. And now, believers, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. I don't want to ask uh, the question, is any believer there? Because I know you are believers. I said I know you are believers. I said I know you are believers. These signs shall follow them that believe. Where are they? I said, where are they? Stand up and receive signs and wonders. Our God is unlimited. Our God is unlimited. Our God is unlimited. He can heal. He can save. Mighty to save. Mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to set free. He sets the captives free. He sets the captive free. Take, take away all that doubt in your mind. Don't limit God anymore. All those who limit God, they are short-sighted. God will do what he said he will do. 
and God will perform everything he said he will perform rest your mind rest your mind rest your mind believers are candidates for miracles believers are for signs and for wonders rest your mind you know that this is your chance and this is your day and this is your time you tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. There's no point in limiting God because he can do all things. And he will do all things in my life. Tell the Lord, he will do all things in your life. His promises are yes and amen. He cannot fail. He will not fail. As he said, I will he not do it. As he spoken, I will he not bring it to pass. You tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. What a revelation. What a revelation. See, even those people that limited God, they were the losers. God still did what he said he will do. He still performed what he said he will perform. But you are now telling the Lord, I will not be of the number limiting God. I will not be of the number that is curtailing the power of the Lord. He can do it. He can, and he will do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do much more, much more, much more than that. Trust the Lord. What challenge are you presenting before the Lord? Trust the Lord. What predicament do you bring here? Trust the Lord. What challenge do you face in life? Trust the Lord. What have you been expecting from the Lord? Trust the Lord. What promise has he given? That looks unachievable. Trust the Lord. Any river uncrossable? Trust the Lord. Any mountain too high, too big? Trust the Lord. Any challenge? That looks so great and so high? Trust the Lord. The old time power of the unlimited God. The old time power of the unlimited God is able. He is able. He'll, he'll quench the fury of the enemy. He will put out all the fire from the enemy. He'll shut the mouth of the lions. Trust the Lord. Now you know that with our God all things are possible. Now you know there's no limitation to the power of the Lord. There's no limitation to the might of the Lord. He's supreme. He's sovereign. He's supernatural. Release yourself into the hands of the Lord and thereby release the hand of God to work in an unlimited way in your life. He can, He will. He can, He will. Miracles for everyone, healing for the sick, deliverance for the oppressed, children for the barren, jobs for the jobless, happiness for the sorrowful, salvation for the sinner, forgiveness for the guilty, strength for the weak. Ability for those who are important, knowledge for the ignorant, success for failures. Trust the Lord with Him, all things are possible. Trust the Lord, He will not fail, He cannot fail. Believe. There shall be a performance of those things that are spoken, 
by the mouth of the Lord. Something definite is taking place right now. Something definite. Something definite. You're not being in the presence of the Lord in vain. In Jesus' name we pray. And the faithful, believing people of God said, Amen. Raise up your hand for a definite thing from definite, definite thing from the Father in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We know that you are the unlimited God. And Lord, we pray the power that created the whole universe will now work in every life in Jesus' name. Spiritual miracle, physical miracle, family miracle, professional miracle. The desires of the people of God fulfill in Jesus' name. Strength for the weak. Power for the powerless. Miracle for those who I need. Do it in Jesus' name. I command every mountain of problem in your life. Mountain, move away in Jesus' name. Every incurable disease, I take authority over you. Incurable disease, be healed in Jesus' name. All those long-standing causes and yokes and problems, I command all those long-standing problems, get out in Jesus' name. Everything you have promised and your people are trusting you tonight, let there be signs and wonders in every life. Manifest your power in every life. Lord, the miracle with each person's name attached unto it, give to them right now. Fulfill your word. Give miracle and give testimony to every mouth. Let there be at least one sign, at least one wonder, at least one miracle, at least one healing, at least one provision, at least one deliverance, at least one something to rejoice about for everyone in Jesus' name. Confirm your power in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The miracle is there with you already.